I'm Ruth Franklin. I have a show here at the Doll Gallery at Great Falls High School. Very honored to do so. This is a collection of work that I did this last year, 2020. Not thinking of a show, not thinking of showing them to anybody, but uh, a release of my own emotions or my own thoughts during the lockdown and keeping it to a simple um, material of china markers and black paper. I started out with a few pieces of black paper and found that it was kind of fun to do and ended up ordering some more black paper and continuing. And my history um, started out in art education, taught for 25 years in Great Falls, uh, 23 years in the junior highs, and the last two years ha here at Great Falls High School. And that kept one busy on lots of different things, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, trying to uh, keep one step ahead of the students and trying lots of new things. So uh, I've never been totally focused on one technique, one materials, one idea, one thing. About 20 years ago, I started oil painting and my interest, I started finding pairs very interesting. And I started doing pairs that I looked at, and then I started do them, doing them from my imagination and in all sorts of settings in oil paint. And so I did that up until this last year. And probably will go back to doing more oils of different kinds um, when I feel I can get around and get out and do things. I've never really been a landscape painter. Uh, I, ha I belong to a group that does a lot of portraits and painting of people, or drawing of people. But when I was in the house and isolated, I started looking around the house and finding subjects. We have a greenhouse and we have a lot of plants in the house. Um, sometimes using my imagination, sometimes um, just finding objects. I have a mask collection. I have a pear collection. I have an egg rock collection. <laughs> I have lots of different items, and uh, that's where I was getting my subjects. Um, just whatever struck me as an idea to do in the drawings. I did go to college. Um, I, well, I went to high school and, and studied art in high school in Billings, and then went to college at um, the University of Northern Colorado in Greeley, Colorado. So, um, Right after graduation there, I came to Great Falls and started teaching in the junior highs. After retiring is when I started doing more art on a regular basis, um, trying to not necessarily sell my art, but just because I was so interested. I've always loved to draw even as a child, and love that opportunity to spend my days doing whatever I want to. Okay. When we moved to Montana when I was 12, my parents started a nursery in Billings, and that's, of course, plants and flowers and all of that kind of thing. And I really don't have that much of a green thumb, but uh, they do intrigue me, and so, while being shut down in the house, I, we have a greenhouse connected to our house. It's part of our house. And I have a few plants that were blooming. And uh, that became a collage of ideas for this particular drawing. This one, um, I just 
was sort of intrigued by keeping it very simple, just um, keeping the background. In fact, this other paint drawing, I had just drawn the flowers and I should have just left it there. But of course you get interested, you have more time and you want to do some more. So I kept adding and adding and I think it was stronger when I just had the flowers and the, and the background was black. So this one I decided that I would limit myself and just do that one particular plant and not everything that was behind it and everything that was with it. So um, sometimes I, I think the hardest thing in art is to know when to stop and say that you're done <laughs> and it's enough and it's okay. Uh, this one was a begonia that I brought in. It was from the summer and it still had one little flower on it. And I just thought it would be fun just to push myself for detail, just to keep layering one thing in front of another and just to keep going. And uh, you might not notice, but there's a couple birds in here. There's a little bird here, which I just made up, and there's one down here. And um, the rest was from the plant. And um, having been used to working in oils and in color, you get that uh, feeling of depth because of the, the change in the color going away, getting grayer, getting less intense as you go into the background. But when you're just dealing with black and white, you're having to figure out how to show that depth by the grayness or the, the strongness of the light on the foreground. And that's been fun to force myself to look at composition and look at values and, of light and dark and, and not working with color, hue, intensity, and all of that. Uh, so it, it limits your ability to show everything um, in the black and white. So that's been a good study. It'll be interesting, I think, to get back into painting and see if my ideas change, if I uh, look at things a little differently. Uh, we had a couple magpies in our backyard at the bird feeder and I just started making up sort of what a magpie looks like and, and just with my imagination started drawing. And as it went along, adding the branches, adding the cherries, adding the feathers, and just working at, with it as a composition rather than a study of those birds. So that was kind of fun just uh, getting that patterning, that repetition of line, um, texture, and the imagination. Uh, that was strictly a design sort of uh, composition, just spinning off the idea of seeing these magpies in the backyard. Over here, uh, again, back to my pears, and uh, adding some red paint. We have a wall in our house that is uh, colored red, and this is it. <laughs> I had some leftover wall paint, and I thought, hmm, that'd be kind of fun just to add a splash of color, just with no, um, nothing added to it, not to make it lighter or darker, but just the pure paint. And, and this is just a made-up pair and a made up background and um, just back to having fun with the light and dark on the pair. Over here, another plant, and that was another flower from the greenhouse. And I did it first, had no idea what I was going to add to it. Thought, well, I can just leave the background black, but just, got carried away with that red paint again, made the big X, and then went ahead and add little Xs in the background. I have no idea what <laughs> any symbolism of the X is, but I just like the shape of it. 
and the filling of that space and using it as a design element. That's a, a good question. I don't always know, but I know I have to do it. And I don't do it for necessarily anybody else. Uh, I do it for myself. And um, I guess it's, it's a soothing, sort of relaxing. Uh, the hours go by without even realizing they have just get involved in what I'm doing and, and let everything else kind of peel off and, and uh, relax. And because I'm not in school and I'm not, uh, this work was not done for a particular show or any idea, uh, I had no tension about it. I had no frustration or, or angst that I had to do it in such a way. So, and that's usually the way I do my art. I very rarely ever book a show first and then work for the show. I, I find that too stressful. I get too hung up on thinking what they want me to do and what I think I should do. And, and if I need to be more creative or more ambitious, and I don't want to use art that way. I want it for myself and um, relaxing and, and de-stressing. And this is uh, the first piece that I did. I had some scraps of the black paper, so they're a little bit different size. They're smaller. And uh, we have some orchids that are blooming, and we have a lot of um, Mexican rugs in our house, and that was sort of a, just a combination. I quite often, when I do still life, I sort of zero in on things. I, I crop it. I don't necessarily show like the whole pot or the whole environment that it's in, but sort of get closer, a little bit like George O'Keefe, just getting closer to the subject and um, exploring what it's all about. Here is um, part of my pear collection uh, made out, the pears are made out of glass and pottery and, and fibers and all sorts of things. So that is something from my house also. And not really done as an official still life, but a little bit of the imagination. And here are other objects from the house and um, also kind of zooming in on things and just giving an impression of, of what they might be. Then I got interested in this light and dark and the values of black and white and how you can get shadows and all of that. And so I decided to order some new paper and just a collection of pairs, just um, because not anything that I've looked at, it's not any sort of arrangement of real pairs, it's just from the imagination. And I started adding a little bit of red um, Prismacolor colored pencil in this one. And this is the first one that I added a little bit of red. And I like the contrast of the white, black, and red and keeping it very simple. You know, I don't know, but the first one I ever did, we had taken a, a trip to Thailand and I saw a lot of uh, spirit houses. And in front of spirit houses, they always had some kind of food. Usually it was rice, sometimes it was boiled eggs, uh, sometimes it was different kinds of fruits, never pears. But uh, I came back and did a piece for a show that was uh, 
somewhat like a spirit house. It was an abstract of a spirit house. And then it had, it was to have some fruit in front of it. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I had some fruit in the house. I had a pear and I thought, hmm, huh, I kind of like that pear. So I did a whole series of pears sitting in front of that spirit house. And I don't think pears are ever found in Thailand. It's not a, a warm weather fruit, but um, it worked for my picture. And that sort of sparked an interest, and I started just doing pears and just started doing more of them. And I find them interesting in shape and um, somewhat sensual, um, just an interesting fruit. And so I've kept with that for about 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> in our travels, um, I like to pick up little mementos. And another thing that I like collecting are masks. And um, here are, there are a couple drawings of some of the masks that we have. This happens to be just a small little sculpture that I actually picked up in Arizona, but it's a Peruvian doll or something that's been made out of Peruvian fabrics. And um, I've changed it a little bit and added some sticks for arms. It didn't have arms on it, but uh, it sort of looks like that. Uh, masks have always been interesting for me, and um, I like the different cultures and the different reasons for wearing masks. And, and uh, This one is from northern Mexico. It is one of their ceremonial masks. Um, it's called a goat mask and they actually wear these and they prayed with them at a certain time of year. And um, all of these things I find interesting.